I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome back to my channel, How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. And this is uh, Saunders Waterford 140 pound weight uh, paper. I've just done a little sketch of what I want so you can follow it. Uh, I've stretched the paper and I'm just leaving now a thin film of water on the surface around the sides just to take up any excess water so that we don't create any runbacks when we apply the paint and then I'm just going to take a rag well kitchen towel sorry and I'm just going to try out an area where the mountains meet the sky and I want that dry This is Naples yellow with just a touch of raw sienna in it, very very small amount. Into that now I just want some ordinary raw sienna. Okay, then we have some French ultramarine and others in crimson mixed together. It's mixed on the blue side. Basically it's just a question of uh, getting it on. This is alizarin crimson and French ultramarine again, but this is mixed onto the red side. Darkening this corner slightly. I'm just letting the colour have its way and uh, go where it wants to. Remember this will dry an awful lot lighter, just softening a little bit of this, just slightly. We will leave this to dry. Okay, your sky's dried out enough from uh, there. What I'm just going to show you, to make sure that the whole of your paper doesn't dry out too fast, you can actually re-wet the damp area when it's not clipped and this will keep it fresh this will keep it stretched so you won't get any curling so we'll move on and I'm just going to re-wet the shape of this mountain right at the back here I'm also going to re-wet this one and I'm leaving a little gap at the bottom because I don't want the paint to run into the next mountain I'm going to re-wet this one and into this I just want to put a slight bit of French ultramarine and in the back one that's probably just a, a little bit too strong so I'll just remove some water off it maybe a little stronger in this one just creating a shadow Softening one or two areas out. As we come into the nearer mountain, I want this to be a little bit stronger. Softening one or two areas with a damp brush. Maybe just lifting a tiny bit of paint out here. And also into that closer one. I'd like to put in some of the <coughs> Sky McDew, which is the French Ultramarine and the Elizabeth Crimson, just to drop here and there. Maybe just a tiny drop in here. Softening it in. soften this little bit here and now we're going to leave this to dry now that your mountain washes are dry I'm just going to add a 
a little bit of water onto some of this mountain and we're going to drop a very very weak wash of French Ultramarine and a light red the board is still laying flat but this is very very weak very watery next mountain and we'll put some rocks in here but these will be uh, stronger still just a tiny bit so once again it's the light red in French Ultramarine bring in the strength of it up check it Just slightly more detail in this one, softening the bottoms out. And we move on to the nearer one, and this one we can make quite strong. I've not wet any area on this mountain, I'm going to put these in dry. Dragging the brush to create a hit and miss effect. Shaping the mountain with your strokes. This is a slightly weaker mixture in the, uh, the lit area that's it's not in any shadow. I want to put the shadow side in of this. What you'll begin to see is a darker mixture of the same colour, French Ultramarine and light red. Now into the thicker darker mixture of the same colour. Once again just creating some ridges. two gullies, spotting it here and there. Just adding a little extra colour. Create a ridge here. Dragging the brush over the tooth of the paper, just a little bit of scrumbling, darkening up one or two areas again. Soften off some of your harsh edges, then once that is dry, just taking a little clean water once again. I'm just going to run a line uh, across the top here. So just want to indicate trees, some evergreens. This is French Ultramarine <clears throat> and Raw Umber. Two mixes going here. One's mixed to the blue side. And I'm just starting above where the water is, dropping this in. And of course, I am letting it hit the water and spread out. Don't make your trees all the same size. This is a very fine detail brush, almost like a, a very thin rigger. And I might just drop in a little raw sienna, just to give it a, a different change flavor. Soften up the bottom. I'm very gently bringing this down the slope in the way that the, uh, the lay of the land is running and we're going to leave that to dry now that your background trees are dry we can move on to these ones here and I'm just adding water again clean water all the time French Ultramarine and raw umber start above the water and bring it in don't have these all the same height 
and just allow this to drift into the, the water at the bottom. Just indicating one or two branches and twigs. The rye will tell you that they are fir trees. And I just want to drop some weak raw sienna into that as well. As it is an earth colour it will push the others out of the way. As they're a little bit closer you should be able to see just a little bit more detail. Once again just strengthen it up in some areas. Just dropping some here and there. Some of the sky colour. French Ultramarine and Alizarin Crimson. But the uh, French Ultramarine will just add uh, a blue tinge to parts of it. I know it's only a small patch <clears throat> but we have to leave this to dry before we can add some in here because I want this to create some mist here and um, just create a barrier between the two. So once again this must dry. Okay now this area is quite dry we're just going to re-wet the whole of the shoreline area where the next set of evergreen trees are creating a hill there just running some clean water along the, the shoreline and the edge then with a the rigger brush <coughs> this is a stronger mixture of the uh, French Ultramarine and raw umber and I'm using a rigger brush for this and I'm just gonna test its strength first and once again As these trees are a little closer, some of them will have uh, more detail on them. This is mixed slightly to the green side. I think it's uh, this colour's got a touch of yellow in it. Um, permanent gamboge, I think it was I put in it. And you can see I'm putting it on really quite strong. Just dropping some colour in along this. And I'm going to mix some sky colour in there as well. Prince Ultramarine and Elizabeth Crimson. Take this all the way across and then just add some of your sky colour in into areas just to give some interest and as this will take a few moments I'll join you when it's done. It's still wet so whilst it's still wet you just take a clean damp brush and run it all the way along the edge of where it meets the water and just lift off some paint and this will encourage a little bit of mist. Okay. Now once again we will be leaving this to dry. Once your tree line is uh, virtually dry <coughs> just re-wet your lake area and I'm just once again just leaving a thin film of water on it and we're just basically putting in what's in the sky <coughs> just a little bit stronger just some Naples yellow all horizontal strokes with this and some raw sienna French ultramarine but just along the bottom here very gently trying not to mix it with the yellow although the Naples yellow is difficult mixer to turn green but if you try hard enough you'll get it to do it and you'll notice that the key colour running through all this apart from the yellows is the French Ultramarine which ties all the colours together French Ultramarine and Alizarin Crimson French Ultramarine and Alizarin Crimson again but this is mixed to the red side so it's a 
a lovely violet horizontal strokes again just darkening up his corners and with my rigger brush once again I just want to pop some reflections in French ultramarine raw umber with a touch of gamboge just to give it that little more green tinge and I'm just trying to leave a sliver of white before it meets the bank just to indicate that there is a gap between the two begin to pull your reflections out um, you don't have to be accurate with this near enough will do keep coming all the way along make it just a little bit stronger in areas you're basically just mimicking um, what you've already put in the land well, this is all wet into wet with these I think that's a good approximation once again dropping some sky colour in some of the blue just for variation this is the French Ultramarine and Elysium Crimson mixed to the blue side and then some French Ultramarine and Crimson Elysium Crimson mixed to the red side add that in And then now I'm going to let that have its way and we're going to allow all this to dry. Now that everything's dry, your water's dried out, I've just uh, put a couple of scratch lines in with a ruler and a craft knife. Um, just to indicate some wind streaks on the water. And I think we could just pop in here a couple of birds, I think. Three. There we go. Now you get round to the best bits, this is where you get to sign it, mount it and frame it. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video, if you have, please click the like button and for further videos, if you want to see them, please subscribe. And if you want to have a look at other videos I've made for YouTube, I will leave a link in the description box. And if you click on that link, it will take you straight to them. So once again... Thank you very much for watching.